everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is Narena Guire with Valley Dreams Ministries. Today, what the Lord has placed in my heart to share with you, the topic that he has given me was um, enough with the Feel Good Church. Um, so what he's placed in my heart pretty much to share today is um, a couple topics that we need to address. Um, what's more important for the Lord is not so much for us to feel good, but the most important thing, if he had to choose either feel good or um, be saved, he's going to pick be saved. Amen. So um, pretty much what he placed in my heart to share with you was um, in order for them to truly feel good, they must um, know the truth. They must know the whole truth. And um, if not, it's just like putting a Band-Aid on, on their situation, um, and, um, and it's just temporarily, but it's not, it's not something that's going to last forever. So what the Lord has placed in my heart today to share with you is that um, to go over uh, the Ten Commandments, I know a lot of people know, okay, we all know the Ten Commandments and what they are, but... The sad thing is, is a lot of people are not talking about it. We're so focused on helping you feel good and and just telling you things that you want to hear. Um, but we really need to get down to the word and get down to what Jesus is trying to tell us. And the Bible has all the answers. So we're going to start with the Ten Commandments. And I pray that the Lord opens your heart and your mind to receive the word that he has for you today. Amen. So there's over 613 commandments in the Bible. And the main ones that everybody talks about is the Ten Commandments. And um, we're going to start with the first one. It says, number one, it says, Not to have, thou should not have, no other gods before me. So that means we're not supposed to have any other gods before him. If for those who haven't watched The Wrath of God, please watch that video and um there's also a video that I did on judgment and criticism. That's another video that I want you to watch that it kind of ties into what we're doing here today. So number one, it says, Thou should not have no other gods before me. So if he's telling us this, this is the number one commandment. We should not have no other gods before us. That means we shouldn't worship anybody, anyone else before God. Amen. Um, and it could be also things. It could be images. That's number two. It says not to make any uh, graven images, anything that's carved, anything, you know, so we're not to be worshiping these things. Amen. Number three, it says thou shalt not take the Lord's name in vain. So we're not supposed to be taking his name in vain, cursing on his name. A lot of people say God this and God that. If you're not Praying, you shouldn't be mentioning his name. If you're not giving him glory, you know, it sh you shouldn't be cursing his name. Amen. Number four, remember the Sabbath day. Keep it holy. Okay. I'm going to go over Bible verses with you. And, um, you know, so there's a day that he wants us, you know, all every day we should be living for God. But there's one day that he wants us just to completely rest, to rest and, um, and to not do any work at all which that's actually a good thing. He's telling us we need to rest and he knows best for us. He's our creator. Amen. Number five, it says, honor your father and mother. Again, I'm going to go over Bible verses with you. And I'm reading these 10 commandments, but I'm going to go over what happens if you don't. What, what does the Bible say about these? Amen. Number six, number six thou should not kill. Number seven, Thou should not commit adultery. Number eight, thou should not steal. Number nine, thou, thou should not bear false witness. Number 10, thou should not convent. And what does that mean, that word? It is actually a strong desire, desiring or yearning for, craving or wishing for, for either the wealth or somebody. You could be... Um, Wishing you had, like, let's say your neighbor has a, a beautiful wife or a beautiful husband. Wishing that that person was yours. Or wishing, you know, their car or their house was yours. You know, craving what they have. You wanting that. 
And um, so that's something that's a, is a selfish desire. And it's, it's actually an evil attitude. And um, so there's a couple, those are the Ten Commandments. But again, there's over 613 commandments that the Lord is talking about. And he's telling us, you know, what we should we shouldn't do. So why again, why do we think that we can pick and choose which commands to, to listen to and, you know, and which commands not to? You know, the Bible is the Bible and God's word is God's word, no matter what it is. We're all sinners. Okay, we're all sinners. But the bottom line is he's not expecting us to be perfect. But he is expecting us to try. He is expecting us to give our lives to him, to trust in him, and to try to live our lives as best that we can. Amen. So if we fall into temptation, if we do something, the difference is, is we repent. And repent means turning away. That doesn't mean continue doing, you know, what you were doing. It doesn't mean, okay, I'm going to repent from this and I'm going to say sorry and then go back and do it again. That's not repenting then. Repenting is turning away and not continue doing it. Okay, um, he has given us all a choice, okay? But how can you make that choice if you don't know any better? Okay, so that's why we need to have a close relationship with God. If you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, we need to have that close relationship with God. Know what is, what is his commandments? What is he expecting of us? And, um, and then he's given us that choice. You don't have to go to hell. You have the choice to, to go to heaven or hell. Heaven exists. If you believe in heaven, hell exists as well. Okay. And he has given you the choice. So what are you going to choose to do? Amen. So um, there's a couple Bible verses I want to go over about the Ten Commandments real quick. And you can find that in, I got a whole bunch of Bible verses here. Let me see which one. Okay. You can Find it in um, Exodus 20, reads, talks about the Ten Commandments. Then God gave the people all of these instructions. I am the Lord your God who rescued you from the land of Egypt, the place of your slavery. You must not have any other God but me. You must not make yourself any idol or any kind kind or an image of anything, the heavens or on earth or in the sea, but you must, you must not bow down to them or worship them. For I am the Lord your God, am a jealous God who will not tolerate, who will not tolerate your um affection flexions for any other gods i lay the sin of the parents upon their children and here we're talking about generational curses the generational curses and generational blessings so we need to um realize that sometimes we go through things in life or we're we're addicted to things but it's it's called it's generational curses that's curses that we have to break i will do a, a message on that soon as well so it says, um, I lay the sins, sins of the parents upon their children. The entire family is affected, even children in the third and fourth generation of those who reject me. But I, I languish unfailing love for a thousand generations. For a thousand generations on those who love me and obey my commands. You must not misuse the name of the Lord your God, the, of, of God. The Lord will not let you go unpunished if you misuse his name. Remember, observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. You have six, six days each week for your, for your ordinary work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath day of rest dedication to the Lord your God on that day no one in your household may do any work this includes you your sons your daughters male and female servant your livestock and any foreigners living among you foreigners living among you for in the sixth day the Lord made the heavens and the earth the sea and everything in them 
but on the seventh day he rested. That is why the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and set it apart as holy. Amen. It reads, honor your father and mother, then you will live a long, full life in the land the Lord your God is giving you. You must not murder. You must not commit adultery. You must not steal. You must not testify falsely against your neighbor. You must not covet your neighbor's house. You must not covet your neighbor's wife, male or female, servant, ox, donkey, or anything else that belongs to your neighbor. When the people heard the thunder and the loud blast of the veil. Okay, I didn't continue. Um, I'm going to stop there. And um, so those are the Bible verses that are talking about the Ten Commandments. And... What happens if we don't listen to what he's telling us? What happens if we're not listening to the Ten Commandments and accepting them and obeying them? So what happens if we don't obey God and listen to his commandments, what he's telling us to do? I'm going to go ahead and read um, Galatians 5.21. It says, envying, murders, um, drunkenness, revealing, and such like of the witch... I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Okay, so what the Lord is telling us by doing these things, by doing these things, even though we give in our life to God, even though we feel that we, we accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior. See, this is something that you guys have to understand because a lot of times we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior and we just think that's it. That's all we have to do, and there's nothing else, and we're we're gonna go to heaven, and and we're you know no matter what we do, you know it's it, that's wrong. Yeah, you accept Jesus. It says you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you will be saved. But how do you know you're truly saved? Because you repent it, and you're living your life for God. Because you're turning from your wicked ways, and your focus, and your focus on Him, and what He's called you to do. When you give your life to God, you're surrendering it to God. You're saying, Lord, I'm going to live for you. Lord, I'm going to live for you. I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, do what you're calling me to do. That's what's giving your life to God. Not say, Lord, I give my life to God and I accept you as my Lord and Savior. And then you continue living your life and continue living in sin. Okay, so if you do that, continue living in sin and, you know, just stop there, then did you truly give your life to God? Okay, because if you gave your life to God, you'll be living for him. Amen. So he's telling us, if we don't follow the commandments, he's telling us, if we don't listen to what he's telling us to do, you know, then, you know, we won't inherit. We won't inherit the kingdom of heaven. So people, we must wake up in order to inherit the kingdom of heaven. We can't be sinning. We have to obey his commandments. Another one that a lot of people and a lot of churches are not talking about today is homosexual. You know, because, you know, nobody wants to offend nobody. And, you know, I have a lot of people that I love dearly that are homosexual. They're gay or um, lesbians or whatever. Whatever you, you know, they're called or what you want to call them. Um, we all sin. It's just a different sin from us. We're all sinners, but we all must repent, okay? The problem is in this world today is that they're saying that it's okay. They're saying it's okay to be a lesbian. They're saying it's okay to be homosexual. And that is going against God's will. That's going against who you were created to be. If you have that desire, that is not right. If you're... If you're if you say, okay, I'm a child and I was born to murder, is it okay to go around and murder people? Would they allow that? Would they say, okay, he was just born that way. It's okay to do it. No, it's not okay. No, it's not okay. It's, it's not. It's a sin. Just like any other sin. And no sin is okay. No sin is okay. God has given us commandments to live by. And that's what we need to follow. It doesn't matter. You know, you can't pick and choose what sin you want to listen to. They're God's law. It's God's law. It's his commandments. He's telling us how we need to live our life. Okay? And you have the choice to either accept it or don't. And you also have the choice to either go to hell or go to heaven. 
Okay? It's simple as that. You give your life to God. You accept Him. Return, Repent. Return from your wicked ways and live for Him. Not that we are perfect. We're all sinners and we're all going to fall. We all fall short of the glory of God. But by His grace and mercy, He has come and He has saved us. He paid the price to wash away our sins, which we must when we, when we turn to Him, we just live for Him and we continue. We continue dying to ourselves and living for Him. And that's the only way we're going to inherit the kingdom of heaven. Okay, is by listening to His laws, listening to His commandments, what He's telling us to do. So I'm not being judgmental. I'm not um, being judgment, judgmental with condemning somebody. Because I'm telling you because I love you. And the reason why I love you is because Jesus loved me first. Amen. And in order for you to go to heaven, you must listen to what he's commanding you to do. We must live our lives as holy as possible. Okay. And we cannot do that on our own. We need him to do what he's calling us to do. Amen. A lot of times we continue trying to live our lives, you know, on our own. And it's not going to work that way. So, a Bible verse that I want to say here too is um, in Proverbs 6.16 reads, okay, and this is very important. I want you guys to understand this and, and listen. It says, there are six things the Lord hates. No, seven things, se no, seven things he despises. He hates hostly eyes, a lying tongue, Hands that kill the innocent, a heart that plots evil, where am I at? Feet that race to do wrong, a false witness who pours out lies, a person who sows dis discord in family. My son, obey your father's commands and don't neglect your mother's instructions. Keep their words always in your heart. Tie them around your neck. When you walk, their, their counsel will lead you. When you sleep, they will protect you. When you wake up, they will advise you. For their commands is a lamp and their instructions is a light. Their correction discipline is the way to life. Amen. So you see... We must learn as a child of God, if we've given our life to God and we accept him as Jesus, you know, as our Lord and Savior, we must live as holy as possible. We must avoid what he's telling us to avoid, not run to it. And no sin is better than the other. It's all sin, period. Okay, so we can't continue covering up. We can't continue covering up homosexual. We can't continue covering up drunkenness. We can't continue covering up abortion because abortion is murder. You know, so these are topics. Yes, they're hard topics and nobody wants to hear them. But you know what? In order for you to be saved, you know, we need to take the band-aid off and fix the problem. Okay, because, you know, you're just deceiving yourself. In order for you to be completely healed... Give your life to God, accept him as your Lord and Savior, and pray. If you have something, uh, 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 addiction, or something that he's saying uh, for us not to do, if that's in your heart, pray. Give it to God. He's the only one that can help you. He's the only one that could deliver you from that. Amen? So, if you don't believe what I'm saying, and you're a child of God, and you say, okay, Lord lo loves everybody. Yes, he loves everybody, but we all love everyone. But we don't have to love the sin, okay? If my son was doing something that he's not supposed to be doing, I'm going to love him because he's my son. But I don't have to love what he's doing. You know, again, I have people that I love dearly. And it hurts for me to have to correct them and have to tell them when they're doing wrong. Because it hurts. I don't want to cause pain on anyone. But if it's, if it's a choice between your life and hell... Or me cause a little pain to tell you that what you're doing is wrong. I'm going to tell you what you're doing is wrong. And if I'm doing something, I, I pray every single day, Lord, help me. Less of me and more of you. And that's what we need to continue praying because none of us are perfect. We need to continue dying to ourselves every single day.
Amen. But everything that we're doing, the Bible has, the Bible is the word of God. Amen. And he is telling us what we cannot do. Amen. And he is telling us in order to inherit the kingdom of heaven, we can't just say, okay, Lord, I accept you as my Lord and savior, but I'm going to continue sinning. I'm going to continue um, killing. I'm going to continue um, having you know, sex with men and having sex with women, continue doing what I'm doing, you know? No, that's wrong. If you give your life to God and you're accepting him as your Lord and Savior, that means repent. Repent means turn away. Stop. Stop completely from sin. And if you can't, keep praying. Get on your hands and knees and surrender to God because he's the one that can take every single sin. He's the one that can set you free. He paid the price for you. And he's the only one that can save your life. Okay, so I pray that this message was a blessing to you. I'm sorry if I offended anyone, but if it's your life, if it's your life to, to save your life, I'm going to tell you with the love that I have for you, the love that God has given me, because he's placed in my heart to share with you that we need to talk more about these issues because there's so many people, church, wake up. We are the church. We are the salt and light of this world. How can we save people? How can we, we, we tell them, you know, okay, you just have to say the simple prayer and you're saved. No, that's wrong. Yes, you say the simple prayer, but you must repent, 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 and turn to God. Turn to God. Don't keep sinning. Return to him. Live for him. Do what he's called you to do. Get on your hands and knees as many times as you need to do it. But give your life to God and surrender because if you're still here, it's not too late. Amen. If you're still here, you have time to surrender your life to God. And even though you don't understand it, even though it hurts, and you might say, okay, well, I've been with this person for so many years, 10, 15 years. I have a house with this person. How can I just leave all this? Put it in prayer. Put it in prayer. Call out to God. God knows. He knows. He knows you're his child. He knows. He knows what's going on. He knows what you're going through. Put it in God's hands. And he will heal you. He will help you. Amen. But don't continue living your life on your own. And don't continue thinking that it's acceptable. Because God calls it abomination. Abomination is something that that is disgusting to God. Okay. So he's saying that he's disgusted by it. Listen to the Bible. Read the Bible. Don't just say that you accept him as your Lord and Savior and you're done with it. Accepting him as your Lord and Savior means living for him. Having a relationship with him and obeying his commandments. Amen. I pray that this message was a blessing to you. I pray that the Lord touches your heart and transforms your life to do everything that he's called you to do. I pray that, that you continue seeking him, even though that he, you don't understand. You don't understand, but remember, there's generational curses that we have to get rid of. Okay. Even though you don't understand it, continue trusting in God. Continue praying to him and calling out to him and say, Lord, if this is your will, if this is your will for me to be clean, Father God, if this is your will, and of course it is his will. He's telling you what's right and wrong. Okay, so just give it to him. Continue praying until you see until you see the change. And the Lord will talk to you. The Lord will confirm what I'm telling you. Amen. I would like to pray and leave you with John 8, 32, which says, You should know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Please share this video. Continue with the love of Christ. Continue sharing God's word. Continue sharing his Ten Commandments. Like he's placed in my heart enough with the feel-good church. That means it's not so important for you to feel good. It's important for you to be saved. In order for you to truly feel good, you must be delivered. Amen? You must be delivered. If not, you're just putting a band-aid on the situation. And before I leave, I would like to leave you with uh, two prayers. One, to give you the opportunity to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And another one, a prayer for, for repentance and just... Um, if there's if something you were struggling with, if any of these things that I talked about that you feel that you've been struggling with, I would like to pray with you at this time. Um, the first one I'm going to do is um, giving you the opportunity to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. So if you could just bow your heads and just pray with me. And if you feel that 
that you've done it, but you turned away and, um, or you're what, you're not sure, um, if you're saved or not, I just ask for you to just prepare your hearts. And if you truly believe in your heart and you truly repent, truly repent, it means turn away and focusing on God and wanting to live for him. So if you're ready to make that decision at this time, I ask for you to just bow your heads and pray with me. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you, Father God, for this privilege that you have given me, Father God, to be called your son or your daughter, Father God. I ask, Father God, that you forgive me, Lord, for anything I said or done or even thought of, Father God. I ask for you to forgive me, Father God, for anything that I've done that wasn't, that wasn't pleasing to you, Heavenly Father, Lord. I ask, Lord, that for you to come into my heart and make it your home, Heavenly Father, Lord. Give me the desires of your heart and help me do all that you have called me to do, Lord. Help me hunger for your word, Father God. In Jesus' mighty name, in the name of Yeshua, amen, amen, amen. If you're struggling with any of these, these uh, topics that I shared with you, I would like to pray with you at this time. If you can bow your heads. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, as we come before you, Father God, and we ask, Father God, forgiveness, Lord, forgiveness of, of, of what we have done, Father God. You know, Father God, what we're struggling with, Father. At this moment, Father God, I declare, Father God, that sin broken, Father God, those chains broken. In Jesus' mighty name, Father God, I declare victory, victory over my life, Father God, over the lives of the viewers, Father God. Father God, I declare every chain broken, Father God. I bind it, Father God, here on earth, Father God, as well in heaven. Father God, that you set each person listening, each person struggling, either with addiction to alcohol or um, porn, Father God, or homosexual, Father God, or lying or stealing, Father God, or whatever the sin is, Lord, Father God. I ask, Father God, for your forgiveness, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. I ask for, for you to just, you know, just clean our hearts, Father God. And help us feel what, what pleases you, Father God, and to do what's right, Heavenly Father, Lord. Whenever we have the desire, Father God, or ever it, the devil tries to use that against us or, or to, to get us to fall, Father God, that we always stand firm, Father God, in who you are and in your word, Heavenly Father, Lord. I ask, Father God, for your protection over us, Father God. I ask for your angels surrounding each person, Father God, each child of yours, Father God. Father God, as they struggle, Father God, that, that as they dealt with this for so so long for so many years father god i command that spirit to be broken in jesus mighty name i command it to be gone i command and bind it to the pits of the hell where it belongs heavenly father lord i i command in jesus mighty name for them to be free at this moment father god because what you say who is free is free indeed heavenly father lord i ask father god for them to have the desire to seek you father god the desire to share your word heavenly father lord and the desire to do all that you have commanded them and called us to do in Jesus mighty name I thank you Lord for your love mercy grace father God and for your forgiveness father God because you came here to pay the price for our sins father God and the good thing is is that we it wasn't too late that we surrendered all to you that you forgave us and then now we have the choice to live for you and to do it the right way I thank you Lord for this opportunity father God I thank you Lord for my salvation for saving me father God. I thank you, Lord, for the love you've given me, Lord. And I just ask that you continue pouring, opening my heart, Father God, to receive all that you have called me to do and to feel and to see, Lord. Remove the blinds out of my eyes, Father God, and, and remove the, the plugs in my ears, Father God. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you guys so much with the love of Christ, Narina Guire. And to next Tuesday, I'd like to leave you with John 8, 32. You should know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Thank you. God bless. Bye-bye.